Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. I'm Julie, your host, and I'm so delighted you could join us this week. My intention in doing this show is to provide information, insight, and comfort to people all over the world by helping to answer life's unanswerable questions. We've got a whole bunch of callers on hold, so we'll get them on in just a minute. Couple of housekeeping items, couple of things to go over. Big announcement. Starting next week, everybody that calls into the show that wants to be on, you got to agree to be on video because we're going to have you on the show and it'll be in the recording and you'll be able to watch it on YouTube. The audio will still be the same on all the podcast networks. But for instance, if if somebody calls in named Susie, Susie's cute face is going to be on camera with me, which we're thinking is going to make it more interesting. So when you call in, you got to be willing to be on camera. I don't care if you're in your jammies. I don't care if you're in sweats. Doesn't matter. But we will only take people who are willing to have their cute face on camera. And my team and I are really excited about it. It's going to be some techno feats behind the scenes, but we we just keep trying to improve this to, to make it more fun and to get the information out. So keep that in mind. We'll be, we'll be sending out emails and it'll be on social media, how you connect, but you'll be able to connect on your phone or on your laptop or your iPad or whatever. So we'll do that. Next week is going to be the first Thursday of the month. So remember, leave a review anywhere you listen to the show or on YouTube or ratethispodcast.com forward slash Julie, because you know what happens the first Thursday of the month. I give away a free session valued at $250. So you want to submit a review and then you're entered into a drawing. And it's always fun to see who wins. So leave, be sure and leave a review if you're interested in a free session. We'll do that November 3rd through 5th, Atlanta. I keep reminding everybody about that. We've, we've, got, a, we've got people signing up for this training already. It's going to be my angelic attendant training in Atlanta. It's going to be live. It'll be, I'm going to do a live show on Friday night and then Saturday and Sunday. Are, you're going to learn how to do all the stuff that I do because everybody can do it because I learned how to do it. I teach people how to do it, and it's a blast. So hopefully you can join us in hot Lana. It won't be too hot. It'll be November. So that'll be a good thing. Okay, let's go to the phones, and let's see who our first caller is. Let me, it's Elaine. Let's go to Elaine. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Julie. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Oh, good, good, good. Hi, I've spoken to you a lot in the past. I've had an appointment with you and I've spoken to you on the show about cancer. Um, Anyways, my 37-year-old daughter today had a mammogram. She has calcifications in both breasts and they want to do a biopsy in about a few days. I was wondering if you could just scan her and maybe check on those calcifications, remove them. I asked her permission and she said yes. Great. Wonderful. Elaine, please tell everybody where you're located. Okay. I'm located in Boston, Massachusetts. Okay. And what's your daughter's name and where is she? Her name is Ashley and she is in, lives in Hopkinton, Massachusetts. Okay. Is that close by you? I'm 45 minutes away. It's where they have oh, yeah. the marathon race, the Boston oh. Marathon. Oh, yeah, year. yeah, yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to you, Elaine, and from you, I'm going to huh? connect to Ashley. All right. And Thanks. then I'll ask her permission to scan her. You know, I always ask permission. And even though you have, I need to hear it. So I'm going to ask her telepathically and then we'll we'll go from there and I'll I'll get her on my radar and We'll see what's going on. How this works, if you're a first-time listener, is I raise my vibrational level to the level of spirit. I watch a laser beam come from my body here in Birmingham, Alabama. It's going to hook into a lane up in Boston. And then I'll have a hologram of a lane, and then I'll watch a laser beam go from a lane over to her daughter, Ashley. And then I'll ask Ashley's permission. Then I'll see a hologram of her if she gives me permission. And I'll envision shooting energy from her feet 
up through the top of her head. And we'll just go to her breasts and we'll check them out and see what's going on. As soon as something's identified, there's an energetic healing that happens. That can take the form of something getting added, something getting removed. I watch procedures all the time in my mind's eye that emulate what I saw in operating rooms for decades because I'm an inventor of surgical devices sold throughout the world. And sometimes I see healings that use methodologies and devices that haven't been invented yet. Elaine, you know this. And so the healing will integrate into Ashley's body. That can happen instantly. It can take days, weeks, months may need some kind of complementary care like change in diet or lumpectomy or whatever. But certainly it's always our spirit's prerogative to utilize the healing in a way that's going to best facilitate whatever it is our spirit's exploring in this lifetime. So here we go, Elaine. Here comes my laser beam from Sweet Home, Alabama, heading up to you in Boston. All right. Got you. Going over to Ashley. Got Ashley. Ashley, I'm talking to your mama. She says, I know it's fine. I don't even have to ask her yet. Okay, great. So shooting energy from her feet up through the toe of her head. Went to the left side of her left breast first, Elaine. Yeah. Yeah. Is that where they're they're seeing some? Both sides. I think the right side is going to have the uh, biopsy. Okay. The right side of the right breast or the right side of the left breast? The right side of the right breast. Okay. All right. And then I'm seeing the energy went to the left breast, the left side of the left breast first. Does she wear an underwire bra? I will ask her. Yeah. Because it looks to me the areas that are showing up the most on my radar are looking like where the wire ends underneath her arm, you know, on the side of her breast. And they... It looks like calcification. I get that. It does not look malignant to me. Either Good. place. Yeah, I do not see Neither. malignancy. Oh, thank you. Oh, my God. She has three children under three. That's oh, why three and under. And she's yeah. just a wreck. No, oh, I bet. I'm sure. Oh, so they look like um, little balls. You know, they call them calcium deposits. They're like little, little hard little balls in there. And what it is, I think, is oftentimes the breast tissue will build that, Elaine, just because it's trying to protect that sensitive breast tissue from the pressure from the underwire. So she's okay. is she nursing? Is she nursing right now? Um, not right now, but it's interesting. She had a baby six months ago and and her breast leaked today mm. um, at the mammogram. Well, yeah, because they were squishing them. I'm not, I'm, that's not a big surprise that that happened there. Yeah. Um, let me, let me just check both girls real good that where the energy showed up was on both sides, on the outer side of both breasts. And she's got a little bit of a calcium little ball where the wire comes up, you know, near the center of her okay. her chest, you know, on the other side of the breast. So I'm looking at that. Yeah. Does she have what they call dense breasts? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm seeing. It, it looks like a bunch of little, um, uh, little globby things in there. I, I don't see any malignancy at all, Elaine. Now, I'm glad she's going to go ahead and get this done. But the when I see something that's malignant in my mind's eye, it's usually dark or black, and it has a sticky consistency like tar. Think of asphalt that's paving a road. That's what it reminds mm-hmm. me of. So yeah, I'm not seeing it. I, I you know let me let me let's do a lymph cleanse on her real fast. Imagine there's a circle like a vertical oval in the front of her body and all her lymph fluids going in there and she's it's spinning really fast lymph fluid looks like an amber color elaine and it it reminds me of the globby fluid inside a lava lamp you know that kind of gloppy fluid inside a lava lamp yeah. that's what it reminds me of so it's spinning really fast and any kind of toxins or anything that we don't want in there. Or there's a hole that's opened on the bottom of each of her feet, and that's coming out the bottom of her feet. 
So we're, we're doing a reverse osmosis healing on her and lymph fluid. Did she get the COVID shots? Yeah, she did. Yeah. The, there's a lot of uh, doctors that are saying that not to get mammograms for six months to a year after you get those shots because they're showing up with a lot of stuff like this. And it just, you know, scares the daylights out of them. But I'm glad she's getting tested and, and let us know what meaning, happens. Meaning, Julie, if you wait a year after a COVID shot, shot it's okay then to get a mammogram? Is that I've just that heard. Means? I've just heard that that when people, when women got the COVID shots and then they went in for a mammogram, they were showing all these false positives and it was wigging okay. everybody out. So I have, oh gosh, I, I've lost count of how many women have told me that that their doctors told them that. And, and even the mammography centers said that too, because the lymph, the lymph nodes were getting swollen after the shots. So... Uh, so I, hopefully that's that's what's going on with that. But I'm not I'm not seeing any malignancy. So I hope that helps. He will be so pleased because I've had cancer five times and twice has been breast. And anyways, you can ex understand her anxiety. Oh yeah, sure. Anybody's yeah. Tell her to switch to sports bras if she's wearing underwire. You, you're wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome. Bye, Elaine. Okay, let's go to Jen next. Hi, Jen. Hey, Julie. How are you? I'm terrific. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for taking my call. I you're am welcome. calling in from Lake Forest, California. Oh, terrific. Orange County, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. We just relocated and it's pretty fabulous. Terrific. Yes, it's beautiful. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. good. You got a question for me? I sure do. I am having horrible pain and just tension in my neck and shoulders. And I am hoping that you can scan me, tell me what's going on there, if there's something that I can do a little bit different, and give me an energetic healing. Yeah. Okay. Did you, has it just come on all of a sudden, Jen, or have you been having it for a while? What's the scoop on that? So I've definitely had it um, on and off for, for quite a while. I work at a computer all day and we did just move. So I was lifting quite a bit, moving things around. Uh, but it's just, it's more than that. It's, it was, it started before we moved and I know it's a lot to do with my mouth arm and I've put my uh, monitors at eye level and I adjust my seat. I have a standing desk, so I go back and forth alternating there, but it, it's something more than that. It's, it's very painful and it's at the point where it's just annoying, irritating all day long. I'm sorry. Does it hurt when you sleep at night as well? It does. So I am a side sleeper and I've had to stop sleeping on my right side because it's waking me up in the middle of the night. Oh boy. Okay. All right. Where did you move from? Uh, from Long Beach down to Lake Forest. Oh, so not that far. It's not like you moved from no. across the country or oh, someplace. Three, 35 okay. miles. Yeah. <laughs> good. Well, good. All right. Here we go. <laughs> what did you say? I'm sorry. I still had to pack everything and move oh, it all. Though, I know. It was pretty short. <laughs> Listen, I've done several cross-country moves and I've done several moves close in. I think the cross-country moves are easier because you're on a timeline and you got to get everything done in, in a truck, whereas the local moves never end. You just keep making trip after trip after trip and you think, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Right? Did you experience yes, that? I agree with that wholeheartedly. We've been oh. to the old house three times, and my husband is there right now trying to hopefully finish up now. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. Crazy. And then, and then you do, I don't know about you, but what I did was I was putting stuff in laundry baskets, like lamps and blankets and stuff that I didn't want to pack up in boxes. And so I, I just was like, I felt like a laundry basket mover queen because it was crazy. But anyways, it yeah, worked. We'll trip okay. a little compact car too. <laughs> oh, jeez. Here we go. Here comes my laser beam from Sweet Home, Alabama, heading to you in Orange County and Lake Forest. All right, got you. Shooting energy from your feet up through the top of your head. All right, what I'm seeing is it's like there's a line down the center of your neck 
and right of center is super inflamed and left of center is just a little inflamed. So the right side looks way more inflamed than the left. Is that, are you right-handed? I am. That's my mouse click arm. Okay. All right. All right. So what I'm doing, inflammation looks like red fog on body parts. And when I say what I'm doing, it's spirit working through me and with me to facilitate healing, right? We're sending the healing to you, whether two, wherever two or more are gathered in my name, you know, that whole thing out of the Bible. That's what I believe is happening, that it's spirit working through me and with me to help you heal yourself. Nobody heals anybody else. We all heal ourselves. So uh, inflammation looks like red fog on body parts, anti-inflammatory information, inflammation, and information is a royal blue color as I picture it. So I'm applying royal blue energy to it to get it calmed down. All right, so the ligaments and the tendons and stuff that are in your neck look like they're frayed. Picture a little girl with split ends in her long hair. That's kind of what it looks like. So I'm adding stem cell energy to those ligaments and muscles and everything, Jen. And stem cell energy, light amber colored gel, sparkles in it because it's woo woo, got to have sparkles. And it reminds me of Dippity Doo hair gel from when I was a kid in the 60s and 70s. And so that's being added to on all those ligaments and muscles and all that stuff in your neck. And it goes down from your neck like over to your shoulder. It's almost like it makes a right turn. And goes, so my guess is you probably have pain in your shoulder as well as your neck. Does it radiate? Yes. Yes. And right. it's going all the way into my right arm, like all the way down the arm, truly into the wrist. Oh, geez. All right. Okay. I see, yeah, it's, I it's see, I see the most of the inflammation goes. I would say not all the way to the end of your shoulder, but so that's what I'm doing, but I'll, I'll just go ahead and put anti-inflammatory energy on your whole right arm. Have you been to see a chiropractor? I have not, no, not in many years. Okay, so I just watched, after that anti-inflammatory energy was applied, I watched a chiropractic adjustment happen. Ask around and and find somebody in your area that people really like that they've gone to for a long time who's a chiropractor, and I believe they can really help you and help alleviate the pain. What it looks like to me is that you're you're a bit of a twisted sister with your skeletal system, probably from working on the computer all day. And then what's happening is those muscles are getting tweaked, and and then when they try and go back to a normal uh, you know, like a normal setting, it's not happening. So a chiropractor can help you with that, can get your skeletal system lined up, and then you can have those muscles heal. So I hope that helps. Okay. okay? I will find a chiropractor. Awesome. I will do just that. Thank you so much, Julie. You're most welcome. Thanks for calling. Alrighty, we do this show every Thursday night at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, and 5 Pacific. Call-in number is going to change next week, so I'm not even going to say it because it's going to be different because we're going to do the video thing. So look for your, your newsletter that I send out, you know, my blog every Wednesday night, and also look on all my socials, which are all under Ask Julie Ryan. So we'll do that. Uh, we'll have it on the website. It'll change. We'll have it on in the show notes. We'll have it on all the social media channels. We're on also all the podcast networks and YouTube and Alexa. Remember to subscribe and leave a review at ratethispodcast.com forward slash Julie or anywhere you listen to or watch the show. And then you'll be entered in for the drawing for our free session for next week. Call-in details can also be found on all my socials, Instagram, Facebook, all those. Reminder to call in is posted the day of the show. While you're on my website, sign up for my newsletter. And it's a question somebody submitted online, online along with my answer. You can also schedule an appointment with me there. I'm booked out for a little bit, but just get on my calendar whenever anything's available because people reschedule 
all the time, multi times a week. I promise you, I talk to people several times a week that say, oh my gosh, I was scheduled in a couple of months and I got in within 24 hours. I say, I know. And when somebody cancels, I almost get excited for whoever's going to get that spot. And it usually fills pretty quickly. So just get on my calendar and then we can move you around. How you you check if somebody, if there's a spot open that sooner is you just ki- you keep the, the confirmation email and there's a reschedule button on there and then you just click on it when you think about it and then it'll show you ones that have done that. And then we'll have a whole hour, talk about whatever you want. My trainings, Angels and Enlightenment training, online self-paced, you can do that anytime. And my angelic attendant training is in Atlanta. November 3rd through the 5th. So come join us and that's going to be a ball. Okay, this week, our question is from Lisa and Lisa lives in Marcola, Oregon. And she says, hi, Julie. I recently had what I think was a visitation from two spirits and I'm hoping you can tell me if it was a visitation or just a wacky dream. If it was, what were they trying to tell me? What were the spirits trying to tell her? Here's the story. My husband and I went with a couple of our friends to the Mizpah Hotel, and it's supposed to be haunted, in Tonopa, Nevada. And that's up in the high desert in Nevada. I think it was a mining town at one point. It did feel a little eerie in parts of the hotel, but because it's over 100 years old and is supposed to be haunted, I figured it was my imagination working overtime. I had trouble falling asleep and woke up around 3 a.m., heard a knock on the door, and saw two people walk into our room. They looked to be in their early 30s and wore 1940s-style clothing. The young woman walked around the bed and stood by my husband. She was holding a clipboard and was writing something down. The man was standing in front of the bed talking to me. While this was happening, I was paralyzed and couldn't move or talk. I also tried to wake up my husband to see if he could see these two people slash spirits. I didn't recognize them, but knew they were from the past because of how they were dressed. When I was finally able to talk, I looked over at my husband next to me and he was awake. He'd been reading a book on his Kindle the whole time. He'd heard me try to talk, but right before that, he also thought he'd heard a knock at the door. Was I just dreaming or did I really see two spirits and why did they come to our room? Thank you for your help. And here's my response. I thought that question was great. And so that piqued my interest. So I thought, okay, we'll do this one this week. And here's my response. Hi, Lisa. Wow. Sounds like you absolutely experienced a visit from a couple of spirits. How you can tell the difference between a dream and a visit from a spirit or spirits is, among other things... A visit seems as if it's in high definition. The colors are more vibrant. All your senses seem heightened. The hair on your arms or back of your neck may stand up. You may have goosebumps and you may remember vivid details about the encounter. Whereas, you know, when we dream, a lot of the time we'll remember it when we're just waking up or we'll be in the middle of it as we're waking up, but then we don't remember it. So that's the difference. You're going to remember a visit and it's going to be in high def. To get more information for you, I did an instant replay of that night at the Mizpah Hotel Hotel at 3 a.m. Your room had an early 20th century decor and your husband was on the side of the bed nearest to the door. The spirits you saw were a man named Ronald, who was the hotel general manager, and the woman's name was Ginger. She was the head of housekeeping. They were doing their quarterly inspection of all the rooms. I believed you witnessed what's known as a parallel reality. Since time doesn't exist in the spirit world, everything that has happened is still happening and it has its own frequency. Sometimes those frequencies intersect and we get to see glimpses of them. Although we don't yet have the technology to detect this phenomenon, the human mind can be trained to perceive past lives, events, realities. Mystics, shamans, medicine men, etc. have been accessing parallel realities since the beginning of time. I learned this skill and now teach it to my students. In addition, receiving messages and visits from spirits when we're sleeping is common, 
because our brains are relaxed and our vibrational level goes back to its factory presetting, the frequency of spirit, allowing spirits to communicate with us more easily. So Ronald and Ginger's spirits didn't visit you, rather you peered into their past reality. Now I had a client today who'd read this blog and read it last night when it came out and she said, well, so how does that work? And I said, well, Ronald and Ginger didn't even see them in the room, didn't see Lisa and her husband in the room because it was like Lisa and her husband in 2023 were watching a movie of those people in the 1940s. And it's like you're watching a movie on TV. Well, the movie can't see you, right? Because you're watching it, it's already happened and it's happening concurrently while you're watching the movie, but they can't see you, but you can see them. So I hope that makes sense. We, I don't, I don't think we're supposed to understand how all this stuff works. I think we're here to have the human experience and we're supposed to have spirit help us have the human experience, but I don't believe we're supposed to understand all this stuff, nor do I think we have the mental capacity to understand all this stuff. Is it feasible? Yes, because it happened. Will we understand it when we get to heaven? Yeah, I believe we will. So I just go with, is it feasible? Is it possible? Yeah. And then I just move on. So hopefully that helps. Lisa, thanks for submitting that question. I thought that was really a good one. Okay, let's go back to the phones and see who's next. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Julie. Hi, Julie. Hi, Julie. It's good to hear your voice. Thank you. Um, you t- I'm in you Wisconsin, too. as you know. <laughs> um, yes. Lately, I've been having high blood pressure, even though I'm on a blood pressure medication. Something inspired me to take my husband's kit and take my blood pressure, and it was really high. Mm-hmm. And uh, it keeps fluctuating, and it's always on the high end, and I'm still on medication. And I feel a tightness in my head and my neck and my chest, kind of like a vice grip. Mm -hmm. However, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia years ago. And if I press on my chest, you know, like on my ribs and stuff like that, and on my neck, it hurts. So I I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's hurt. I don't know if it's muscular skeletal. Okay. Fibromyalgia originates in the gut. Fibromyalgia is considered an autoimmune disease. I'm using air quotes here. And it can all be eradicated by a change in diet and getting your gut healthy. So same with all the autoimmune diseases as well. And I've heard several doctors say that, that all autoimmune diseases are caused by leaky gut. So stay low on the food chain. If God made it, eat it. If man made it in a factory, do your best to avoid it. Stay away from fermented foods. The gut biome test that you hear me talk about, go to Viome, V as in Victor, I-O-M-E dot com forward slash Julie Ryan all together. Don't, don't put a separation in there. And I would do that, Julie, right off the bat. And let's find out what are going to be the best foods for you to eat and what are going to be the best foods for you to avoid. That's number one. Number two, there's a product called the Zona Plus, Z as in zebra, O-N-A plus. Go to Zona, Z-O-N-A dot com and look at that. That's a device that you squeeze with your hands and it's been shown to normalize blood pressure. It was developed from technology used with fighter pilots. And it helps the the vascular system regulate the, you know, the contraction and an expansion of it. And I have m- several, several, several clients who've gotten off all their blood pressure medication and have normalized their blood pressure with the Zona. So I want you to check that out too. Okay, both of those. Did you have a pen? Can you write those down? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me get you on my radar. Here we go. Here comes my laser beam from Sweet Home, Alabama. Heading up to you in Wisconsin. All right. Got you. You look you look swollen. All right. Do you feel swollen? You look like you're, you're 
uh, either retaining a lot of water or you're eating something that's inflammatory. Your whole body looks swollen to me, like the Michelin, the Michelin woman. <laughs> you know what the Michelin man looks like? You look at like the Michelin woman. Yeah. 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 So the first thing I would do is tweak your diet, tweak what you're eating, try and do as healthy as you can, you know, by grass fed beef, pasture, chicken, pork, organic as much as you can, all that kind of stuff. Stay away from anything that's sugar and anything that's refined. Do you eat sugar? Yes. Yeah. Sugar's the most inflammatory thing you can eat. Stay away from sugar. The thing that helped me the most stay away from sugar, and I'm four years sugar sober, Julie, you may have heard me say this, is brain octane oil from Bulletproof. And it's a highly refined coconut oil. It keeps me off the sugar because the brain operates either on ketones or on glucose. And sugar is is causing a lot of these problems. If you can get off sugar in anything that's refined, like bread and crackers and cereal and stuff like that, your blood pressure is going to normalize if you can if you can change what you're eating. And I would check out those other two things that I recommended too. So I hope that helps. Okay, thank you. Thanks for calling. Let's go to Tanya next. Hi, Tanya. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Mia? Terrific. Where are you? I'm from coming I'm calling from Raleigh, North Carolina. Okay, terrific. Got a question for me? I do. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to get called. I said I didn't prepare one, but I'll do it off the top of my head. Oh good. Um <laughs> You're just calling to listen? I've been kind of just feeling um uh, uneasy in my stomach area, a lot of gas or a lot of kind of nauseous feelings, pretty healthy, no chronic illnesses, no chronic medications that are taken. I just kind of want to know what's changed kind of lately um, and what I, sh- you know, what I should be paying attention to if you can see anything and give a healing. Yeah, absolutely. Let me get you on my radar. Here we go. So you just called in to listen? And then we, you got called on. Yeah, uh, yeah, all the time. <laughs> well, there you go. See, you know, the people, the people I'm supposed to talk to get called on. I'm led. See, I'm in the South too, like you, so I can talk like them. All right, here we yeah. go. Here comes my laser beam from Sweet Home Alabama, head, heading over to you in Raleigh. All right, got you. You look like a yeast roll, girl. You got yeast overgrowth. Right. Yeah, yeast. So... That gut biome test I was just talking to Julie about, viome, V-I-O-M-E dot com forward slash Julie Ryan. It's more than 50% discount. My team got a great discount for us. So you want to go there, get that, and then stay low on the food chain, what I was just talking to Julie about. Avoid fermented foods. People say, well, fermented foods are supposed to be really good for you. Yeah, they are, but not when you have yeast overgrowth. It just is like pouring jet fuel on the fire. So you don't want to do that. You want to avoid fermented foods. And then if you're going to eat fruit, Tanya, peel it because there's tons of yeast on the peel. Yeast and mold are like nature's garbage disposal. They're what makes food and other natural materials decompose. And so it's on the peel. I don't expect you to peel a blueberry or a grape, but certainly an apple, a peach, a pear, a plum. You know, you want to peel those. And then uh, what else? Uh, Freeze and reheat your food. When we leave food in the fridge overnight, it decomposes because it gets a bunch of yeast on it, even though it's refrigerated. So you want to freeze and reheat. I am the Ziploc bag queen of the universe. (laughs) Everything in my kitchen goes in a Ziploc bag if I'm going to freeze it. And then what I do, the trick that I've come up with, Tanya, is I'll, I'll freeze it flat. You know, I'll get the air out of it and I will freeze it flat on a shelf in my freezer. And then when it's frozen, then I'll stack the packages upright like files in a file drawer. And they'll have the, the name. I'll, I'll use a Sharpie and write 
you know, whatever it is, broccoli or whatever. Uh, especially if when it's frozen, I'm not going to be able to tell what it is. So you want to do that. And then lastly, nice statin which is an antifungal, N-Y-S-T-A-T-I-N, nystatin. You want to get a hold of some of that. It is a prescription, but that will help you feel better really quickly when you get on an antifungal. All righty. And that'll, uh, in the meantime, what I've done is I've cleared the yeast out of your system, but you'll, you're going to want to support it with your diet. And that'll, that'll help you feel better. Well, thank you. You are most welcome. Thanks for calling in tonight. Okay, let's go to Shelly next. Hi, Shelly. Hi, Julie. Shelly from Australia. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thanks for calling in. What time is it there? 10 o'clock in the morning or something? It is. It's, uh, yeah, 10.30. I must be psychic or something. <laughs> so no, that no, I'm kidding. But but it's always fun when I get to talk to somebody from Australia because we get to talk to you real time in the future. And you're talking to us real time in the past. Absolutely. So talk about woo woo. That. That's woo woo at its best, right? Um, maybe I should do you a reading. Just kidding. Maybe absolutely. <laughs> yeah, because it's the future. <laughs> that looks good, girl. We're gonna put you on the comedy tour. Oh, fun. All right. You got a question for me? I do. So um, I have an elderly mum who hasn't been very well, and I just wanted to see uh, what phase of transition she's in. Oh, what's her name? What's her first name? About an hour north of Sydney. Her okay. name is Rita. Say that again. Rita. Rita. Okay. And you're in Sydney? Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm going to hook into you and then I'm going to hook into your mom. When you say she's not doing well, what does that mean? She's have She has arthritis, problems with her heart and circulation. So mm-hmm. she's just struggling being at that age. And how young is she? She's 84. Okay. All right. My daughter-in-law, who's a vet, Shelly, always says to me, age is not a disease. I was like, okay, I didn't say it was, but you, know, you sound elderly. I didn't know she was 104 or 84. The older I get, the younger that sounds. So here we go. I'm going to connect into you and then from you to your mama. All right. Got you. All right. Going to Miss Rita. Got Rita. She's popping in and out. She's not completely in phase one yet, Shelly. She is, do you know what whack-a-mole is? Is that just an American thing? Yes, I do. You know what it is? Okay. So her spirit, the spirit when somebody's dying exits through the top of the head. Have you seen the 12 phases of transition chart on my website or read about it in my book, Shelly? I sure have, yes. Okay, great. For those of you that have no clue what we're talking about, go to AskJulieRyan.com, click on the 12 Phases tab, and there's a downloadable chart there that talks about what the configuration of angels and deceased loved ones and the spirits of deceased pets is as we're transitioning. And you can download it, and uh, and it'll be helpful for when you have somebody who's dying. But the spirit exits through the top of the head, and hangs on, looks like a cartoon caption bubble. She's Her spirit's in and out right now, Shelly. So let's ask her the questions. Miss Rita, are you ready to go? She's saying, oh, she said, oh, yes. <laughs> like that, oh, yes. All right. Are you in pain? She's saying, at times, what do you need? Permission to go. Who do you need permission from? My family. She said, my family and friends, my family. And then she said, I'm friends. Does she have friends that she's really close to that kind of feel like family? Uh, Yes, she does. Yes. Okay. All right. I would get people in there to see her. And, uh, And do you have siblings or is it just you? 
I do, yeah, four of us. Okay, so be sure all of you say, Mom, it's okay if you want to go. Just watch over us from heaven and come visit us and and uh, we're all going to be fine. We'll miss you, but we're going to be fine. So often, Shelly, that's really the key that the elderly are are looking for is to be able to to go, you know, to have permission to go. And I was at a funeral yesterday. I was at a funeral yesterday of a woman who was 90 and had six kids. And I was working with the family. It's uh, my son, Jonathan's best friend's grandmother died. And uh, I kept telling his mom, because we were texting back and forth, I said, you guys, you guys got to tell her it's okay to go. And then when they finally did, then she, she went on to heaven. So yeah, be sure you guys all tell her it's okay to go. I will do. I will do for sure. Because she keeps telling me she's in quite an amount of pain and that she doesn't want to wake up. So I was like, what do I do? So that's yeah. very helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah. The other thing too, Shelly, is download that chart and and put it on your phone, save it on your phone. And then what you can do is just ask aloud, what phase of transition is my mom in? What phase of transition is mom in? And you'll hear a number. It's going to come in instantly, as fast as you can snap your fingers. And then you're going to know to refer to the chart and you look and you see what's phase six look like, what's phase seven look like, that kind of thing. And it'll give you a visual and you can share it with your family members. And then as she's progressing through the phases, then you can get the family in to say goodbye to her. And and it's just hard when people have to travel and take time off work and, and all of that. So that can be really helpful. The other thing is people can go in and out of the phases. So she may be in phase six, she may slip back to phase four, she may be in phase nine, she may be kind of all over the board. So that's a possibility as well. But I find that the 12 phases of transition chart is really, really helpful to families when they're going through this. One other thing too, Shelly, is is, uh, just look for the little miracles along the way because they'll be plentiful. The family yesterday was telling me about all these amazing things that happened as their grandmother was spending her last days on earth. And and, and interestingly enough, her husband died 21 years ago and she died on the same day within three seconds of the time he died 21 years ago. So pretty amazing. So I, I hope that helps. Thanks for calling. Alrighty, everybody, that's it for this week. Sending you lots of love from Sweet Home, Alabama. Call in next week if you want to be on camera and you'll get chosen to be on the show. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to follow Julie on Instagram and YouTube at Ask Julie Ryan and like her on Facebook at Ask Julie Ryan. To schedule an appointment or submit a question, please visit AskJulieRyan.com. This show is for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be medical, psychological, financial, or legal advice. Please contact a licensed professional. The Ask Julie Ryan Show, Julie Ryan and all parties involved in producing, recording, and distributing it assume no responsibility for listeners' actions based on any information heard on this or any Ask Julie Ryan shows or podcasts.